Hi everyone and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Rosanna and today before we get started I want to take the time to thank each and every one of you for showing your support by subscribing, liking, commenting, and watching my recipes. Know that it means the world to me and the purpose for each recipe is to make a difference in your life and in your kitchen. Having said that, let's talk about today's recipe. I'm gonna be making a loaf of white bread. It only has a few ingredients. You just need to perfect the technique. Once you have that down, you're gonna wanna make your own bread because there's just no comparison in flavor and freshness. But if you're new to my channel, before we get started, I wanna invite you to subscribe like and share this video and don't forget to click the notification bell so that every single time I upload a new recipe you get a notification. Okay, let's get working. Our first step is a very important one. In a medium sized bowl combine an eighth of a cup of warm water and an eighth of a cup of warm whole milk from the one cup we will be using for the recipe. Make sure the temperature for the water and milk mixture is between 105 to 110 degrees. If it is below 105, the yeast will not activate. If above 110 degrees, you can kill it. Make sure the temperature is on point for a great end result. Sprinkle two teaspoons of dry active yeast and a pinch of granulated white sugar, which feeds the yeast. Give it a quick mix. After a few minutes, it will start to bubble and foam. If it doesn't, I suggest you discard it and patiently start over. Next, in a mixing bowl, add one cup of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of granulated white sugar, one and a half teaspoon of salt, the remaining of the one cup of whole milk mentioned earlier and one tablespoon of melted unsalted butter. Transfer the bowl to the mixer and mix with a paddle attachment for about one minute on medium low. The end result should be smooth and creamy. This looks perfect. 10 minutes have gone by, let's check the yeast. It's foamy and bubbly. Yeast is a living substance. If proved correctly, it will cause the gluten to expand in the flour and your bread will rise beautifully. Add the activated yeast plus half a cup of all-purpose flour. Mix for another minute on medium-low. Now start adding the rest of the flour a quarter cup at a time. Wait for it to incorporate, then add your second amount. Now we're ready for the third and final quarter cup. In addition, we're adding three tablespoons of all-purpose flour one at a time as well. The dough will start to slightly pull away from the sides of the bowl after the last addition but not enough. It will still be sticky at this stage. At this point, change the paddle to a hook attachment and knead for another five minutes until smooth elastic and the dough does not stick to the sides. It's been five minutes and mission accomplished. The dough is not sticking to the sides. We're going to add two tablespoons of soft room temperature unsalted butter one at a time. Once most of it has been absorbed Add the second tablespoon and wait until the dough comes back together. Then stop the mixer. The dough should feel very soft. We are now ready to proof the dough in a deep bowl. But first, butter the bottom and sides to prevent anything from sticking. Set the bowl aside and lightly flour your working area. 
Transfer and mold the dough into a ball by slightly applying pressure while rotating. Once done, place in the buttered container, turning to cover lightly in the butter. This way it does not dry out when proofing. Cover with plastic wrap that has been sprayed to prevent sticking or if your bowl is deep enough, you can cover with a clean kitchen towel like so. Place in a warm area until it has doubled in size. The time will depend on the temperature in your house. If it's cold, it may take longer, but just be patient and give it time. The estimated time could be between one and a half to two and a half hours. Meanwhile, spray a nine by five loaf pan and set aside until we need it. Once your dough has doubled in size, you can move on to the molding stage. Lightly flour your working area and carefully transfer the dough. Look how spongy it looks. This makes me super excited. We can see the yeast is working on the structure which will give us a soft and airy texture. Pat it down into a long rectangle. It should be pretty easy to mold. If proved correctly, it will not be resistant. Okay, so the rectangle measured about 12 inches long by nine inches wide, just to give you an idea. Take the top portion and fold down two thirds of the way. Now take the lower portion and fold upward until it reaches the end where we will tuck and pinch to create our seam. By the way, know that the full recipe will be down in the description area for your convenience. Gently turn up so that the seam is on top and not the side. Our cameraman got a little confused for a second. No worries, it happens even to the best families. Fold the ends over on opposite sides and pinch to seal them. Once done, pat it very lightly and flip over so that the seam lands on the bottom and you end up with a smooth top. Now cover with a well sprayed plastic wrap. Don't use a kitchen towel since we are looking for it to proof and crown over the top. The sprayed wrap will prevent any sticking. Place in a warm area for the final proof. Again, the time it will take really depends on the temperature of the room. In a warm place, mine took about an hour and a half. By the way, I loosened the plastic wrap as well to give it room to grow since I may have done it too tight at first. Once doubled in size and you see it crowning over the top beautifully, remove the plastic carefully and bake at a 375 degree oven for 18 to 22 minutes or until the inside of the bread reaches 190 degrees and a golden brown color is achieved. Once done, remove from the oven and place in a cooling rack. There is no time to waste. We have to remove the bread from the mold to prevent the bottom from steaming. Be careful, it's hot. So make sure you are protected and ensure you don't get burned. Take some soft butter and spread evenly over the top, allowing the heat to melt it. As a result, you will achieve a glossy and tempting top. I know this is hard, but we need to let it cool down completely before cutting into it. Make sure it stays in the rack to ensure there is no steam trapped that could potentially soften the bottom. The time we have been waiting for is finally here and it was worth the wait. Check it out. It's mind blowing and I get so excited. I'm constantly smiling at each of the stages and relaxing during the proofing time. Overall, I enjoy it very much. Baking your own bread could be intimidating. Overcome the fear and don't miss out on the softest, 
fluffiest and freshest bread you will ever have. Once you master the steps, there's no going back. Mm -hmm. The whole experience is so exciting. It's so good. Guys, the time and effort you put into this recipe is well worth it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Remember to come back and let me know how it went down in the comment area. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.